from the Genie Hayes Virtual Studio. This is Marquette Now. Good evening, I'm Nancy Flaherty. And I'm Angelina Galulo. Coming up, a National Marquette Day announcement. Celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. A hot dog on wheels. And later, a star behind the scenes. But before we get into all that, students and faculty show up in hundreds to support students facing sanctions for a demonstration in August. Timothy Lateau takes us into the crowd. Ten students walk to the AMU to submit their appeals for sanctions received as a result of holding a demonstration at the August 25th convocation, resulting in its cancellation. Those ten students walk with hundreds of faculty and students trailing behind them in a show of support, um, demanding change. To... We asked today, where is that change? <laughs> Why have our students been forced to stage a demonstration, a demonstration that ended in their humiliation, in order to spotlight the lack of resources on this campus? Now some of those sanctions include a $300 fine, 20 hours of community service and writing an educational program on the university's demonstration policy. It makes it extremely isolating. You feel like no one cares about what you have to say or the problems you're facing. They want so badly to be this like inclusive campus that's very diverse, but in reality I feel really isolated on this campus. They were traumatized by the ways in which they were treated and they had to um, detail the racist incidents that they've experienced on this campus to justify why they were even protesting in the first place. A university spokesperson released a statement saying, quote, because of our commitment to student development, when students have acted contrary to our community standards of conduct, these behaviors are addressed through the student conduct process, which is reviewed on a regular basis to ensure that it continues to work as a fair and equitable process. At every turn, university leadership has said they will not change the student conduct process. But we're not denying that students may have in fact violated student conduct policies. We're here to draw attention to the fact that their actions were reasonable in the face of a university that has not made the appropriate changes to care, to nurture, and to support the diverse student body it champions. I hope they recognize that students are not alone, right? We're not gonna leave them alone. No. And that we're here for them. Not alone, no. There's plenty of support behind them, an entire block long. I'm Timothy Lateau, Marquette Wire News. The rescheduled convocation took place Saturday in Varsity Theater. This is after the original convocation on August 28th was postponed due to the student demonstration. University Provost Kimo Ayun delivered remarks as well as a video address from President Lovell. And so students, in the month that, that you've been here on campus, uh, you've had the opportunity to learn a little bit about Marquette. Mark your calendars for the official National Marquette Day. Marquette University Men's Basketball announces on Twitter, NMD is February 4th, 2023. The squad will take on the Butler Bulldogs for the second year in a row at Pfizer Forum. Emergency overdose kits are now available to students at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. These kits are known as Narcan boxes and primarily used during a fentanyl overdose. They are currently it's really important for a couple of reasons. Couple of reasons. One, to have them accessible when you need them so that if you come upon one of these uh, situations where someone's had an overdose, you're calling 911, but you don't have to wait for something else like campus police or your or someone down the hall or something that you know has some Narcan. Fentanyl is lethal, even in very small amounts. Students can be susceptible to overdose if fentanyl is not checked for in other drugs. Dosed fatally to treatment, so it's important that we save lives and help people deal with addiction. There's a new way of getting around, thanks to the reappearance of electric scooters on campus. Three companies are launching pilot programs with the city of Milwaukee, but not all students see a purpose for them here on campus. 
Well, I'm just the type of person I like to walk everywhere. Gets my exercise. Because I'm studying so much, I'm sitting down a lot. So I don't think I would. I don't think I would ever use them unless maybe late at night sometime, and I didn't want to walk somewhere, and it was the only option. Scooters are not allowed to be ridden on campus grounds, but they are available for use until 2023. I mean, it's a nice, easy way to get on and off campus, around campus. Um, yeah, I think they're great. Hispanic Heritage Month is underway, and Fiesta de Noche is one of the most popular events on campus. Marquette Now's Timothy Lateau takes us in line to get food and drinks. It's Fiesta de Noche, and Angel Martinez watches over the celebration like a bouncer at a bar. You gotta hop in the line, bro. You gotta hop in the line. But on tap, it's just horchata and soda. Pineapple, lime, tamarind, grapefruit, orange, and then sangria. Not alcoholic. No alcohol at all. Don't get your hopes up, okay? He wasn't the only one thinking along those same comedic lines, though. Officer, go ahead, grab a plate. Let everyone go to the first. Would you like some more chata? Uh, yeah, you know, but I'm just gonna have to take all of it though. I'm gonna have to confiscate this from where uh, you, you guys. <laughs> Look, he's like, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just messing around. <laughs> Hosted by the Gamma Beta chapter of Sigma Lambda Beta, it's more than just a party with great food. It's a celebration of culture. I get to stay connected to my Mexican roots. Um, we first started with Aztec dancing, so that's back in the indigenous times. Um, the prehistoric times, and then we kind of go on through history with all the outfits. Connecting with old roots and new friends. When I first came to my first ever fiesta, I, was, I wasn't in the fraternity, so I just came to see what it, was, what it was, and that's kind of how I find out about the guys. The opportunities to meet new people are literally endless. Would you like some horchata or a soda or something? Yeah, you're doing, would you like some horchata or a soda? Would you like some horchata or a soda? Would you like some horchata or a soda? I mean, it's like, it's, it's kind of like a joke, right? It's like every 30 seconds, it's somebody new coming by. It's like, hey, how are you, horchata or horillos? And it's like, all right, go, 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 go. So it's very, very fun. It's just kind of something that's fast paced. Celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month with a fast pace, big plates, and the perfect place for culture and friends to mix. I'm Timothy Lateau, Mark at Wire News. Parents Weekend kicked off this past weekend with parents traveling from close and far. It's been beautiful. We have had a really good time. He knows campus now, so we're just tooling around and we're going to go to Sprecher Brewery in a minute here. Because our daughter's here and she's uh, just graduated from Clarkson and she'd never been to Marquette. Uh, we're doing the tour again and so that's been fun. Well, I'm glad it's only been a month. <laughs> It's a real empty house now, so we miss them a lot. The cat's very, very lonesome. The Marquette University Police Department is paving the way for sustainability with their new all-electric motorcycles. The motorcycle is just the second of its kind, and a lucky MUPD officer is getting the chance to test it through November. Not only is this motorcycle bringing sustainability to campus, but also conversation. The following video contains flashing lights, your discretion is advised. Marquette Now's TJ Dysart has more. The Marquette University Police Department has just acquired a brand new motorcycle. But you might see it before you hear it. So now it's running. So, it's running? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so... Look at that. Yeah. Acquired through the Harley-Davidson Livewire program, MUPD Lieutenant Kevin Walls will be testing and giving feedback on the bike until November. Uh, we started talking, and I explained who I was, and he said, yeah, um, hey, I'm, you know, I work with the Livewire program with Harley-Davidson. Um, I said, you know, I mean, if you guys want to put something together and maybe we could work with you, as because uh, Harley-Davidson and Marquette were near West Side partners and whatnot. Equipped with multiple compartments and gadgets, the new bike has the potential to do just about everything a typical squad car can do. Um, the back right now is designed so that you could uh, put a computer, like a, a smaller tough book type, and then a, uh, maybe a printer, so if you were gonna write tickets. Even though the bike is flashy and snazzy, it still comes with a number of risks. Uh, even without the lights and sirens responding to a call, I clear almost every intersection as if people can't see me, like I'm invisible. And, and that's kind of how I ride all, all the time anyways. 
is just pretend that they, I know that guy, I'm just gonna pretend, I mean, he's slowing down, but I don't know what he's really gonna do. In terms of sustainability, one can only hope that this is just the beginning. It doesn't make any noise, so now I can talk to, you know, citizens, uh, students, whatnot, you know, and it's kind of a neat icebreaker, right? On well for Reggie. I'm TJ Dysart, Marquette Wire News. Students and families on campus this weekend receive a surprise visit from the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile. The Wienermobile is driven by Ketchup Caitlin Bross. She is a public relations grad turned hot dogger for Oscar Mayer. I started school here in 2018. Um, lived in Straz, I was in part of the honors program, part of choir, all that good stuff. Um, we chat with everyone from ages 8 to 80 and share with them the magic of the Wienermobile. You really have to be passionate about this program and the way it can change people's lives. Every single day we get to make other people's oh days and it's such a unique position that I really do cherish. Of the Midwest to Chicago and I makes am its way. I am now going to do the best job in the world and something that's coveted by thousands of people every year. Um, I really am one lucky dog to get to drive the Wienermobile and I have Marquette to thank for that. All right, let's take a look at the current weather. 51 degrees right now in Milwaukee, humidity around 60%, not too dissimilar from what we normally have. What's interesting tonight, however, it's going to get a little chilly. We're going to have a frost advisory tonight. Winds north, northeast at 8 miles per hour. So it's going to be a little bit chilly tonight. Rest of this week, going to start to get a little bit chillier. That's the weather for now. I'll be back later, coming up after the break. A campus character keeping it fresh for students. And later, campus dining on the move. We'll be right back. Hey world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. Anytime you're driving, have the seatbelt buckle tight, both hands on the wheel and your phone out of sight. We're not in your hand trying to text somebody back because if you do, your car might get smacked. The moral of the story, just put your phone down. The people on the road will stay safe and sound. Put your phone down, put your phone down. People on the road will stay safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs> Over. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Every day, millions of people are connecting. Father, cosplayer, mentor, actor. It's time we take a step forward, come together, and discover how accepting our differences can make, make us stronger. Welcome back to Marquette Now. I'm Nancy Flaherty. And I'm Angelina Galulo. Students in the Fuji's Improv Group put on a 12-hour improv show. The marathon took place outside the AMU on Friday. The fun starts at 6 at night and lasts until 6 in the morning. So it's really, it's like a rite of passage. It's something no human ever wants to do, but we have so much fun doing it, we really wouldn't trade it for anything. It's like an initiation. We, we call our new members new G's and they are new G's for the full year until they complete their 12 hour show. The marathon is a tradition that has gone on for many years. Really, it, the feeling of accomplishment that you get when you reach the point of delirium and then you keep going and you're still getting laughs, I, there, there's nothing like it, it's addicting. This Marquette janitor is a familiar face on campus. But he is known for so much more than his cleaning. TJ Dysart has more. The time is 4 a.m. This is what I take care of. And Wilmore Peters, a Marquette University janitor, has just started his day before most students have even finished their second dream. I'm in charge of a couple of floors, so I check all my floors, check this, check this, then I proceed on cleaning the bathrooms, the hallways, furniture, and all that, et cetera, et cetera, things that need to be done throughout the period of time I'm here. But Peters does a lot more than just clean the building. What's up, man? Hey. What's going on, man? How are you? I'm good, man. This one of the other guys is on my floor right now, too. Pretty good guy. Peters makes it his mission that every student in the Commons feels welcomed, happy, and cared for. You really brighten everyone's morning. 
regardless of their relationship. Well, thank you very <laughs> yeah. much. Have a good day. Thank you. I can say I never have a bad day here at all. And with Peters around, students aren't having any bad days See either. right here? She's awesome. She's studying right now. <laughs> But we talk every single day about life and what she should be doing, and she's doing a marvelous job each day. So keep doing what you're doing, okay? Um, in the morning, walking to class, and you see him in the hallway, he always gives you a fist bump, just give you some words of encourage encouragement. His words of encouragement? Prepare for the challenge. And the challenge is not about, you know, going to class every day and do this, do this. It's the challenge of learning what you're doing in the classroom. And also when you get out of the classroom, make sure you have a plan so you can perceive them doing what you need to do as far as your classes and X, Y, Z and all the other things that comes with it. You I'm TJ Dysart. Yeah. Thanks, man, fellas. See y'all again, man. Marquette Wire News. Social House is performing at the 2022 Homecoming Celebration on Saturday. The concert takes place at 7 p.m. at the Alumni Memorial Union. Plan on arriving early as only 900 seats are available. The 707 Hub is always on the lookout for fresh new ideas. The 2022 to 23 Explore Challenge gets underway on October 4th. Marquette students, faculty, and staff can receive up to $25,000 in seed money for their projects. We all have to eat, but what if we just don't have the time to get food and walk and that just takes that. way too much time. Luckily, Marquette knows Timothy Lateau roves around in search of the new machines taking the sidewalks by storm. Say what? That's a Kiwi bot. These are the sensors and then this is the camera. Over the years, many people have said, oh, that'd be great if a, a robot could deliver food. And you're like, yeah, okay, whatever. And so now to see a robot actually on campus, it's not something we once you talk about it, you don't think it's actually going to happen. So now that we're here, I mean, it is a big deal. That's right. Robots delivering food from campus dining services. I know there's a lot of hype around it. They are really cool and I'm just really excited to start using them. That excitement might go up as the temperature goes down. Especially like when winter time comes along. I don't know how good the yeah. tires are on the robot, but I, I could definitely see a use for it then. When uh, it's like five degrees outside, they're not gonna wanna go outside at like 4 p.m., 5 p.m. when it's pitch black outside and it's just like <laughs> not happening. No matter the weather, it's $40 to subscribe for a basic plan of 15 deliveries after downloading the Everyday Mobile app. I don't think I would use it that much, just like depending on like the price. I heard it's a little expensive. Subscribe or just vibe. So as the, I need help is if they're stuck somewhere, um, they can't move. People have been looking out for them a lot though. Um, so we're hoping that the community will kind of help them along a little bit. <laughs> they kind of seem to have their own personality, which really creates kind of an, a community vibe when you see them across campus. You can't help but stop and like want to take a picture with it. It's not a photo you have to wait to take in the future. It's one that you can snap right now. I'm Timothy Lateau, Mark at Wire News. We'll have to see how those Kiwi bots fare with the colder weather coming up. Luckily, we have Dane Golden here to cover us more with weather. But Angelina, did you have to put on a coat or a scarf today? It was getting so chilly out. It was so bad. I put on a coat and a scarf, and I was still freezing. <laughs> Hopefully, Dane has more for us. Dane? Yeah, you know, the weather is getting colder. Are those leaves changing color? Not yet. Well, let's get into the current weather right now. So let's take a look. Tonight, 42 degrees, right? You're going to start seeing this kind of weather more and more often. We're getting into fall now. This is what's important here. 75% humidity, okay? So that's why we have a frost advisory in place tonight because it's gonna be pretty cold, pretty humid, no precipitation projected, and winds east, southeast at seven miles per hour. Take a look at the overnight lows. For once, down here in southern Wisconsin, Madison, 34, far colder than Superior up here in the north, 41. Milwaukee, 42, not too bad compared to the rest of the state. Tomorrow, taking a look at the weather, down here in Milwaukee, 60 degrees. We're actually got the coldest of the state. The rest of it's pretty warm. Tomorrow, 60 degrees. Gonna be a pretty beautiful day. A little bit humid at 55%, about on par with what we're used to. Precipitation, none expected, and winds east at seven miles per hour. Now with this five-day forecast here, this is gonna be one of our best stretches of weather coming up this entire fall. Uh, high to mid 60s here. Gorgeous day if you want to go out to the beach. Like I said last week, might be one, some of your last time to do it. Co uh, the lows not getting too low down here in the 50s tonight should be about as cold as you're going to see. 
Now, the weather in the Midwest is calm, but due to Category 4 Hurricane Ian hitting the southeast, rain may be expected next week. Now that's it for weather. Stay with us because Isabel Bonebreak will be back with sports right after this. After you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. Welcome back, I'm Isabel Bonebreak with your Marquette Now Sports Report. The women's volleyball team is making history, looking to break the record for the best start in program history. The Marquette Golden Eagles team welcomes in Big East foe, the Butler Bulldogs. Marquette jumps out to an even 11-5 lead early in set one, but the Bulldogs fight back and pull themselves within five. The Golden Eagles stand tall and close out set one on a 10-2 run to take a one set lead. After only hitting 8% in set 1, Butler looks to change the tides and finds himself up 13-9 in set 2. Although trading runs throughout the rest of the set, Butler closes the set with 2 kills and wins set 2, 25-23. Set 3 is all Marquette with 2 runs to put the Golden Eagles up big leading to a set 3 victory, 25-28. Butler will not go down without a fight, taking a 17-13 lead in the 4th set. Marquette then goes on to a 12-2 run to win the set and the match behind Yadar Aounche's career-high 10 kills and first career triple-double. After her performances against both DePaul and Butler, Anchete earns Big East Defensive Player of the Week honors. With this win, the Golden Eagles extend their winning streak to 9 and move to 11-1 on the season, a program record in NCAA Division I action. The men's soccer team hopes to strike big in their non-conference finale. Going up against the Billikens from St. Louis University, both defenses come ready to play. After holding St. Louis to only two shots in the first half, the Golden Eagles go into the halftime break tied with the Billikens nil-nil. But St. Louis quickly finds its momentum in the second half, scoring a goal in the 48th minute from senior forward Jake Klein. St. Louis's lead does not last long as sophomore Adul Karim Paris scores the equalizer in the 63rd minute. In the 72nd minute, senior goalkeeper Chandler Howard punches away a corner kick, but Klein tips it back in for the go-ahead goal and eventual game winner. The Golden Eagles drop their last non-conference game 2-1 and will return to Big East play this Friday. Basketball season is only five weeks away and one of the biggest days on Marquette's campus is officially on the calendar. The men's basketball team announces on Twitter that National Marquette Day will be on February 4th, 2023 against the Butler Bulldogs. This will be the second straight year that the Golden Eagles will play the Butler on National Marquette Day after beating the Bulldogs last year 64-56. Both the men's and women's team kick off their season in Milwaukee on November 7th. On the pitch, the women's soccer team is off to their best start in Big East play since 2014. Wrapping up a two-game road trip against Butler, Marquette hopes to remain perfect in Big East play. Although the Bulldogs start the scoring in the first half, the Golden Eagles score four unanswered goals throughout the match and go on to win the game 4-1. That's it for sports, but don't go anywhere. Marquette now will be right back with our Down to the Wire segment. Sophia and Gabriel, even though these old knees can't follow on your adventure to the forest today, these flowers represent my love. These stitches and threads join us together, 
And wherever you see a flower, a bird, a beautiful tree, know that my love is with you. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Welcome back. I'm Nancy Flaherty. And I'm Angelina Galulo. Marquette Wire Executive News Editor Julia Abuzahab joins us now for tonight's edition of Down to the Wire. She's with Rashad Alexander to talk about addressing violence in hip hop. Julia? Thanks, Nancy. I'm joined by Rashad. So, Rashad, how are you doing today? This is a good night. How about yourself? Pretty good, pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, I'm here to talk to you about your article that you wrote about gun violence, hip hop artists fall victim. Yeah. So, I just wanted to start out by asking what inspired you to write this piece? Yeah, so recently, um, about two weeks ago, PNB Rock was gunned down in LA. Uh, he was getting dinner with his, or lunch with his girlfriend. And, um, you know, PNB was one of my favorite artists back in high school. And, you know, it was really sad to see. And it kind of made me reflect on, you know, all the talent that's been lost in the past few years that are a part of hip hop. You know, you think back to uh, Nipsey Hussle, Pop Smoke, King Von, rappers like them. And, you know, I just felt like it was time somebody kind of addresses this. And I felt like, you know, just wanted to really just talk about it, what was on my mind and how I feel like rappers should hold themselves accountable and each other accountable when it comes to the violence within uh, their culture. And in your article, you talk about how rappers often describe having the most dangerous job in the world. How do you feel about that statement? Do you agree with it, disagree with it? Um, well, obviously I wouldn't say it's the most dangerous job in the world, but when you look at, you know, the rappers that are, you know, getting gunned down or getting shot at and things like that, it really is dangerous to be a rapper right now in 2022. And it shouldn't even have to be that way, in my opinion, because I feel like, you know, these people are entertainers, you know, their job is to provide to their fans and, you know, put out content and what and whatnot. And, you know, you don't see a lot of this stuff happening in other genres like, you know, R&B and pop and things like that. So the fact that it's such an issue within rap is very concerning to me. And I feel like a lot of people are kind of normalizing it, too. And I feel like that definitely has to change because we shouldn't have to wake up, you know, to these constant news that, you know, somebody died last night or this morning and stuff like that. And, you know, we just got to find a way to address it somehow. Yeah, for sure. Um, some, like you said also in your article, some listeners believe that artists um, or artists and rappers' <laughs> lyrics relates to their lifestyle. Do you agree with that comment or how do you feel about that? Yeah, you know, a lot of people think that the violence is often caused by you know, the lyrics, but, you know, I feel like these people, you know, their lyrics is just like a reflection of what they've been through and growing up and things like that, you know. You know, we all know with like the Young Thug and Gunna and YSL case, they're trying to use their lyrics against them. To, for me personally, I feel like that's wrong because, you know, their lyrics, you know, are, a ref you know, their storytelling, you know, they're trying to talk about, you know, the way they grew up, the things they've been through, things like that. That's art, you know what I'm saying? So I don't really think that, you know, why, Lyrics could play a role at the same time. These, it's not a instruction to how people should live. I feel like it's just them telling their stories. So that's how I feel about when it comes to the lyrics argument. Why do you think violence in rap and hip hop communities is so prevalent today? Yeah, you know, I feel like you know, with the fan and social media involvement today, I think I definitely think that plays a role in it. You know. Um, you know, the more interactions that rappers have with one another and their fans and things like that, oftentimes it leads to the violence. But I also think, you know, it's a lot more street rappers these days as well. And I definitely think that sometimes they can't really differentiate whether they're a rapper or a gangster at the same time. And I feel like oftentimes when those worlds collide, it leads into, you know, terrible things, unfortunately. So that's kind of why I really think is the main reason why it's become so much worse these days. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a great rest of your night. Thank you for I'll send it me. back to Nancy and Angelina in the studio. That's our report for tonight. Thanks for joining us. I'm Nancy Flaherty. And I'm Angelina Galulo. Remember to check marquettewire.org for all of the latest campus news. Good, Good night, night Marquette. Marquette.